Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the CCS Second Channel. My name is Thunder, and I am joined today by my wonderful new color caster, Oshi. How are you, Oshi? Today we are bringing you the matchup between TA Knight and Dorado Gaming. I am, you know, about as terrified as a Teemo and Tribrush. Uh, this is my first ever time doing League of Legends commentary. Very excited to be here. Super happy to, for uh, CCS having me on. Uh, really interested to see what these two teams managed to pull out. Obviously, uh, looking at very different... I guess, tiers of gameplay between the two of them recently in terms of their overall standings. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, speaking of TA Knight, they've already locked to playoffs. They've had it on lock for a week or two now, kind of in that top three for the Wednesday League. But Dorado, they've had multiple chances to lock uh, playoffs, but they've lost every time so far. Now, losing this week does not necessarily lock them out. There's a few weird scenarios, but if they lose and yeah okay infinite win which could very well be likely yeah okay if it has been an absolute uh. tear dorado is out but we are already into the draft gangplank is banned ari is banned ta knight is on blue side dorado is on red and they also take away velkos from sevdiff in the mid lane who has been one of the better performers for dorado thus far which is a really interesting thing to talk about because obviously, you know, we're looking at the the high plat, low diamond kind of tier of, of these players right now, except for Sev, who's a gold two. Absolutely incredible job carrying Dorado in the last couple of games that they've played. You know, everybody loves to look at the top lane for Moonshot, really expecting a whole lot of uh, carry potential out of him. Uh, I would say as long as Moonshot, I, you know what, they... I'm rolling away. <laughs> they really need to do one of two things, obviously. They need to either focus heavy on Sev and have Moonshot play that weak lane and just thrive as best as he can, or they have to lean really, really heavy into Moonshot, who just has not been performing as of late. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, that Moonshot previously... Uh... I'm completely forgetting his name. See, this is what... Okay, I'm completely forgetting the name changes. But Moonshot, it is a name change from previously, so if you don't recognize him, he is still the same top laner that Dorado has had this entire time. But the Moonshot name hasn't exactly been that <laughs> tough. So we'll have to see. But throughout the rest of the band, Volibear and Jinx are the other two bands for Dorado, the Velikaz, as well as the Zeri. So bands scattered kind of all over the place, but the first pickup is the Senna for TA Knight, and Dorado have locked in the Lucian. I'm personally expecting the Nami to follow this up very quickly. Yeah, that's kind of just a traditional heavy harass bot lane, the super aggressive situation. Um, I I don't really know about Lucian. I don't believe that's something that we've seen Wuchai play. Um, at least not not according to the records that I've got. Um, definitely tends to favor the Zarya as everybody else does right now. Uh, you know, the hyper carry of Jinx. Jinx obviously gone. Zarya obviously gone. Um, opting for a Lucian. It's that shorter range. Okay, so we got a Jarvan coming in. So I guess they're really going to be looking into more of a dive type gameplay. And indeed, very aggressive. We'll have to see where the solution does end up going though, since they haven't, well, I mean, and also technically Jarvan support is a thing, but it's been so good in the jungle. I doubt we'll see it. And we'll have to see Lucian can technically kind of be flexed in all three of the lanes. Yeah. I don't know if we'll see that, but TA Knight, they are hovering the Ivern here. I'm no, 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 no. Would not see, yeah, no, I would not want to see Reedy on that. Yeah. Instead, they go for the Jin Zhao. Yeah, Reedy, Reedy has played a lot of Jarvan, so that was a big takeaway pick, right? That that was a fast lock Lissandra. <laughs> I'm not even going to talk about the junglers. What was that instant decision? Just snap pick. Now, to be fair, I will say Hadio does have a fair number of Lissandra games in a solo queue, is very comfortable on the champion. I, but I'm so interested. Normally, Lissandra is uses like a counter pick to things do you think it's maybe anticipating this you know the jarvan cataclysm targeting it or maybe the lucian going mid lane with the all-ins just using that ultimate to keep her safe uh there's the nami like you called it. of course we everybody everybody saw that coming it's just a, such a clean pick with the lucian the lissandra i think is an overall counter pick to the comp that dorado showed early they showed the hand of wanting to play that die very early lissandra is an incredible counter engage uh incredible disengage character um so many opportunities to if Jarvan overextends ever so slightly on the initial engage you lock him down if you get engaged on and you have that quarter second you get the ult on yourself get a bunch of your health back uh throw that in with a stopwatch and uh, too bad dives gone opportunity lost Xin Zhao, uh presents the same thing with his ultimate it's just a huge knock away big clear up kind of get everyone out of the way no big deal um right now I'd say TA Knight is very very strong in their draft in their counter draft Considering they had first pick, they have counter-drafted just based off of the first two picks from Dorado, and that's never what you want to see. 
from Red Side. Yeah, absolutely not. And T and I, of course, so Dorado is going to have to pick one of their solo laners. And so T and I will get another counter pick there. Of course, Dorado on Red Side will get the final pick at the end of the day. But T and I, they still have to pick their top laner and their support. Well, actually, you know what? I say all that. Dorado knows who their mid laner is going to be, so they can pick mid lane and then leave top lane for last. But Tom and Seraphine have been banned away as pairings for the Senna. And then the Vagar and the Cassiopeia have been banned away from Sev in the mid lane as well. They are really targeting Sev with these bans, which, I mean, mm-hmm. maybe some people would have expected that, but he's, you know, with the performance he's put up, maybe they're just thinking if we get him off his power champions, he won't really have any effect on the game. Yeah, that being said, uh, how do you how do you push off a man with such a wide repertoire, right? Uh, so many characters have come out under his under his uh, finesse, for lack of a better word, so far. Uh, Galio picked up. Okay, so that's probably going to be a Galio support. Well, we do have the Nami already, so Galio oh, true. mid. Galio mid. In Nami mid? Matchup? What's the? There's no. No, look, I, I've played Nami. There's, there's no, <laughs> Nami yeah, is the, probably the worst champion to go into a lane ever. Malphite, mm-hmm. TA Knight are thinking of that as their first pickup for the top lane. Although, actually, you know what? I say that that could be Malphite support. Who knows? Yep. The thing is, Snow Life doesn't really play malphite or those types of tank engage support so i fully expect to see a follow-up enchanter here who do you think would pair up really well with senna to kind of make at least this bottom lane a little bit safer what if senna is the support senna could be the support you're right oh can we see a set can we see fasting senna set fast (laughs) that would be um interesting No. Ziggs. So it is going to be the Senna support to the Ziggs. They're going with the Mage bot lane. This is an incredibly AP heavy side from TA Knight right here. Very much looking for that counter engage burst potential. Very heavy in the the uh, minion clear, wave clear, lane pushing situations. Xin Zhao is going to have an absolute field day if his teams get pushed inwards, get a whole bunch of lane dominance established. Jarvan's, if Jarvan falls behind, the whole jungle is going to belong to Zin. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to see that jungle matchup in Tractable. We'll have to see what this last pick is, and it is the Camille in the top lane. So we have the Lucian and the Camille is kind of very aggressive powerhouse picks, and then the mm-hmm. Galio, Nami, and the Jarvan as supportive options. But exactly what you were saying with the you know pretty much all TA Knights being you know AP damage. Galio has that magic resist, has that AP yeah. shield that he can throw on top of him. So might be a pretty safe mid lane. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see where everybody ends up here. Uh, in terms of like uh, we have it's got to be Galio mid right uh, like it's not going to be Camille mid we're not going to see that no way. um so I'm pretty sure we know what we're looking at in terms of who's going to be where just really want to see them finalize that uh, uh I don't know man it's either it way is- it's I I'm a little scared for Dorado just because they're coming into this as, as the underdogs naturally um take that with a grain of salt that you will ultimately with a comp as dive heavy as this if they fall behind they're they're in a huge amount of trouble i mean nami one way or the other you can use that t- that total wave as an engage a disengage is great cataclysm not the greatest disengage tool you can do it and then you queue out if you really want to but i mean dorado's entire comp is des- it designed around diving and who are you going to dive on from ta knights yeah that that is a good question i mean I guess, you know, the Senna's not exactly going to be pumping out damage, but you could jump onto the Senna, you could jump onto the Ziggs, but kind of along those lines, it, for Dorado, I, you kind of can jump on anybody except, like, the Lissandra or the Xin Zhao, just because there's no Ezreal, so both of the kind of, like, big damage threats out of the Senna and, and Ziggs, they don't really have a way to escape unless they take Flash, and once their Flash is gone, you can Hextech Ultimatum them, you can Cataclysm them, you can... You know, you can Galio ult them, you can Nami wave them. So there's not like, you know, there's there's some kind of protective elements, but it's interesting that TNI didn't really go with any of those, you know, kind of get out of jail free cards yeah. that we could potentially see. Yeah, while they may not have, they have, the champions that they did pick are very disengage heavy, not in, ter- not in terms of 
doing so alone, though, right? You take a right. look at them all, and obviously, I mean, Senna's only going to be able to kind of ghost out, can't really do a whole lot in terms of abilities. Xin Zhao, same thing, can only push you away with the ultimate. Lissandra has six ways from Sunday to get out of every situation. She's ideal, but she also has the ability to lock down the team while escaping with the snare. Uh, Malphite is one way in, no way out kind of character, <laughs> but when you're playing the top lane tanky, that's fine. Uh, and Ziggs can keep you out and get out afterwards as well with the satchel. So it's, yes, while they don't have to get out of free as real ease and dashes, things like that, they have a lot of play around one another to give them the same kind of result, uh, which ultimately is, I, I would assume, they're just going to try and death ball. I'd say around level 9 or so, you're going to see a whole lot of grouping from TA Knight. They're going to try and take that bot lane tower very early with the Zig satchel bonus. Um once you get one interesting well we'll have to keep an eye on that now one thing to note we did briefly call that the senna would be the support and of course in this lane it the senna is still the supportive matchup but it is snow life on the zigs and dallas on the senna so snow life a bit of a uh, you know a bit of a chance for him to really he's been a phenomenal support so far throughout the entire CCS and here in week nine put on the zigs to mm -hmm. kind of you know he it, his carry pants are on this time around it's going to be on uh, it's going to be on him to get some of these kills and get the turret gold into his own pocket so it's a it's a yes and no right obviously senna isn't going to be strictly supporting there's a huge damage output potential coming from that character especially as you hit the late game um personally i almost like to filter into a hyper carry kind of situation just because the uh, insane uh range and damage bonuses that you get from her passive as you go um but yeah it's going to be really interesting to see how snow life comes through here because like you mentioned earlier on very very ten or tends to show uh very much in the heavy support form of support not the tank form not the engage form but very much the enchanter as you see band seraphine kind of style exactly so we'll have to keep an eye out we you know i think you mentioned that you know around level nine ta is going to start grouping up i think dorado is more than happy to group up and meet them just full on with this dive comp with this bongo comp as it has been previously a bongo, called. Comp. A bongo comp if you watched lcs last year but we have just a couple of minutes before the game starts we will take a brief moment for spectator delay don't go anywhere before we get into game one between ta knight and dorado gaming omega
Hello everybody and welcome back. We are in to game number one between TA Knight on the blue side and Dorado Gaming Omega on the red side. There was a brief pause, somebody's internet crashed, but we are all back and ready to roll. Looks like there's no cheeky level ones, although Reedy is inspecting the enemy's red side jungle spots out. Oh, hold on. Reedy okay. a little far for that ward, but gets out just fine. Gets it in the first place and ultimately finds out that yeah, Reggie's not there. Uh, so, you know, blue team, a little bit of information. They know that Reggie's going to be starting on the bot side, going to be starting blue buff. Actually, Reggie's looking towards Snow Life here. He's not going to have any CC, so Snow Life should just be able to walk out of this, take a little bit of damage, turn around, get a little more gold in his pocket, nice and easy. Um, yeah, red wards traded, and that's kind of it. Exactly. So, you know, it, it got, I felt very scared for Snow Life for a second, but thanks to Jarvan just having the flag, it was nice and easy. Now, though, everybody's going to be able to track exactly where all of the junglers are, and we'll have to see. Looks like nobody's given anybody a leash, but... Uh, Reggie opting to actually start red, wants to meet the Zin on the bot lane. Uh, see if Reggie does anything funky here. Hold on, they're trying to stronger. They are in this war. Dallas takes a huge chunk of damage. A heal comes through from Mooshai very, very early. That is flash and heal popped by Dallas. Heal and ignite popped by Mooshai and Saffron. You know, that, that heal keeps keep Mooshai nice and healthy, but I'm interested. I wonder if that was, I wonder if that's what he actually wanted to to press. It didn't seem like they were under that much threat. Dallas now, though, chugging the pods, is pretty much back up to full health, but that flash burn could mean Reedy could get down there and cause some troubles if he can get this cleared up fast enough. Yeah, it looks like we've got Reggie heading up to the top lane. No ward up there just yet. Interesting to see. Oh my goodness, this bot lane. This is the aggression that we thought we'd see, though. Exactly. Oh, Mooshot going in with the hook shot into the wall dive. Reggie is here with the flag and Draglevar gets knocked up, forced to flash away. Reggie takes a turret shot, but that is it. Top and bottom lane. They are showing their aggressive power and Reggie just going for the red Raptors into top lane gank. So Ulvaric, I actually think Ulvaric managed to sidestep that knock up there, which is why he gets a flash off so soon afterwards. I don't think the flag and drag connected certainly close but there we saw the satchel charge making it happen had you able to get out as well with the flash but reggie that is two uh, dare i say successful gangs back to back mm -hmm. hasn't even visited the bottom lane yet and he's and he is on a march to it he's gonna meet jin zhao who has just taken his blue buff yeah this is a bad situation for red team muchai oh never mind what hard snow life just gets deleted good news is the kill goes over to the nami but reedy and red Now, and the Ziggs kill is essentially saving Reggie in the river there. And not just four members chasing that down, four flashes on blue team have been expended so far. We are not even four, just about to hit four minutes into the game, and the only person with flash on their team is Snow Life, who died. If he used it, maybe he would have been alive. But then again, all, that would have been all flashes used. There's no no flashes used on the side of Dorado so far. I mean, Reggie has visited all three lanes, and while he didn't really have any impact on the bottom lane, the first two definitely were, you know, due to him. And then, you know, proceedingly, the Jin Zhao haven't burned the flash as well, but Muchai and Saronger, they are just showing why they are one of the stronger bot lanes in the league. And they're saying, hey, you know what? Moonshot has been getting all the glory. We're going to make sure that our names are known. They really want this playoffs berth. This is exactly, exactly the kind of turnout that they wanted right at the beginning of this game with this steam rolly hard dive composition. Any kind of lead that anybody, any lane for red team can get here is going to be unbearably beneficial. Absolutely. And speaking of leads, Muchai only has 18 CS to Ziggs' 25 at the moment. That's one thing to keep in mind. Of course, the Ziggs, you will see, will be farming quite a bit. This is the Fasting Senna. So, but otherwise, CS is relatively even across the map. Otherwise, uh, but that Ziggs, you know, getting back to lane here in just a moment, we'll have a wave to start munching on. But Lucian, after getting essentially the assist kill, will start to catch back up pretty quickly. And now both junglers are heading up to the top side of the map, but Reggie is going for the recall while Jin Zhao goes for the Gromp clear. 
Can we talk about the fact that uh, Ovarik started tier? Ovarik is unquestionably looking to trade and push very, very strongly into the flash of this Moonshot right here. Oh and Moonshot. That's almost a dead snow life, but he still wants more. <laughs> they want to go in. Moochai and Sevronger, they get dealt a big chunk of damage by Dallas. And that's what you were saying about Dallas having some pretty good powers in ADC. But mm -hmm. that is one thing to note. You know, the <laughs> tier on a Malphite into a Camille. You wouldn't think that this rock would have a pretty good matchup into, you know, the, the lady with the sword legs. But it, <laughs> I guess Olvark <laughs> wants to try to make that happen, even though he is down currently about 10 CS. And Reggie is still up there. Maybe making, maybe thinking to make a repeat gank. Yeah, it looks like he's uh, he's gonna wait. He wants Uvark to try and push back up a little bit. Uh, and unfortunately for Uvark, Reedy is nowhere to be seen. Looking down at that bot side, even though bot lane is mid. Um, so Reggie, you know, opting just to take the scuttle crab. Finally, here we go. Top lane, not quite. Uvark really wants that level six. Ooh, this is an exact same play as what happened before, except the Hextech Ultimatum is here. The Flash into the knockup. The Flash, actually, you know what? That wasn't even a Flash. That was a Flag and Drag. The Flash mm -hmm. not available for Orvark to get out of that one. And that is a dead Malphite. Yeah, that is, again, exactly what this red team is looking for. Dorado Gaming finally getting themselves set up in a perfect position. You said the last couple of weeks they've been struggling. They've had, what, three opportunities now to fully solidify themselves into the playoffs. And it looks like things are starting off to go their way right up until Dragon's gone. Indeed. That is the first neutral objective of the game. Harold will be spawning shortly. I mean, you know, what is your opinion on kind of that first Herald where maybe where should it go? Are they going to be what team is going to be fighting for it? Obviously, it is a pretty important one, but are we going to be seeing a big team fight around that Herald? And not necessarily big, but a team fight around the Herald here soon. We talked about early on how around level nine, this blue team is really going to want to group together and just kind of force the hand of uh, Dorado Gaming. You know, if, if TA Knight can really hold their own, get all of their ults up, and not fall too far behind. Right now, they're actually up in gold, even though they're two kills down. Um, I would say that, yes, we will definitely see, at the very least, the top jungle kind of brawl it out for it a little bit, um, with the Malphite ult being up. Look at how strongly he trades with Moonshot on this Camille. I mean, Ulvarek's playing incredible. What a very strong, very intelligent build with the tier start off. Um, but yeah, I definitely think that we're going to see a little bit of action around uh, around Shelly here. Um, it looks like they actually want to dive Moonshot. And this is what I was trying to talk about with the tier early early on is uh, Uvarik wants to be able to push Moonshot in so that they can get the easy dives with the Lissandra ult uh, to just kind of reset the tower aggro. Indeed, and it looks like they were considering the dive, but the jungler and the mid laner have returned to their respective positions. Harold has spawned, but Moonshot's at a little under half HP. The magic shield is there. Hextech Ultimatum will be back up in just a moment. I don't think Olvark wants to get caught in that one again. And so both teams now, it looks like they're just, we're seeing some resets come through. Reggie is back out onto the map. I'll have to see if he wants to make something happen. But one again, one thing to note, Snow Life still up, but still up CS on this Lucian, which mm -hmm. I am, which is going to be something to watch. I think as this game goes on, Ziggs isn't, you know, I don't think he's as much, as much upfront in your face, but I feel like a fed Ziggs, even if it's just CS, can pose quite a bit of a problem for this dive comp if he's not taken care of immediately. I think, oh my goodness, the fed Ziggs is definitely the problem. Huge flash by Mucha to get out Mucha, of that. This satchel charge doesn't quite finish him off, but that was a ton of damage. The Cataclysm coming through now onto Dallas takes him out. That is the set of gone. Ziggs is still alive, but I don't think for long. Meanwhile, Sev in the mid lane falls, and there goes Snow Life. It's a two for one trade mid laner for the entire bottom lane. You take that for Dorado, but ideally Sev wouldn't have had to die there. Yeah, it's, it's super unfortunate that he ended up going down there. Um, honestly, as, as strong as a fight that was, they're only 500 gold up afterwards. Again, three kills ahead, but just getting out farmed at every turn. Uh, super unfortunate for Dorado Gaming in that regard. But I mean, it you got to look at the way that TA Knight's playing this. You know, they built their comp as the counter engage. They built every, they drafted absolutely everything. About, oh no, Muchai getting oh, caught out Muchai. here. Uh, Satchel Charge puts him into the wall. This is a Lucian with a lot of damage, but he falls. Snow Life getting a good chunk of, well, yeah, getting a good chunk of gold onto this Ziggs. And Olveric 
still holding his own up in the top lane. CS pretty much even as the two top laners duke it out. Moonshot Hextech Ultimatum is up, but we're going to have to see if Olvera can survive this dive. There we go. The Hextech Ultimatum comes through as well as the wave. There is an ultimate and a flash, but Sevronger, that's two kills. Nami with the most kills on the rip so far. <laughs> That is a 3-0 and 1 Nami with a 300 gold bounty on them. Uh, I mean, great rotate to get this Shelly to stop Blue Team being able to use that. But Muchai is left alone down here, already down and getting dove. The pulling comes through, but a satchel charge into, into Reedy coming in. Dallas is the one that gets the kill. This might just be a dead turret. In the meantime, Dorado, they're going to get this Rift Herald, but this is going to be four plates going over to Snow Life and Dallas. Your absolute ideal with a comp is you get that kill top lane, you pick up the, you pick up Shelly, you go drop it, and off you go, you get first tower, especially while the plates are still up. Not this time around. What is going on? Oh, what an Mark engage. Just charges in. The Cataclysm comes through. Oh, Mark, how, how did he survive that? And now Reedy wants what? to go in. The Herald gets a charge off. Oh, Reedy with the Herald a charge of his own. But, oh my goodness, now Dallas is here as well. These are low health bars, it's a 2v3. Maybe it can happen if Hadio gets here soon enough. But Reggie goes in with the flag and drag. Dallas tries to heal up, but Reedy, he can't do enough damage. The Ziggs with the long range bomb from downtown gets a kill and it's a one for one trade in the mid lane somehow at the end of all of that. Absolutely incredible accuracy on that ult, managing to trade it out so it was a one for one. Ovarek actually almost died to the Herald charge at tower, which was hilarious. Probably down around 60, 70 HP after it. Very lucky to not have been, you know, just tickled a little bit by uh, anybody else on that red team beforehand. Um, but I have to say, play of that fight, once again, goes to Savrangur on this Nami. Incredible bubble to turn it around and to keep the, keep the fight going. Ultimately resulted in that one for one instead of a zero for zero trade, um, but was also responsible for Shelly getting that little extra damage on those, I'd say two plates total, three plates total. Uh, another huge bubble by Savran right there to just kind of find Hadio, but unfortunately Ooh. gets caught out. Is surgical with these bubbles, but Hadio managed to get over the wall. It goes golden into the stasis. The satchel charge comes through with the dawning shadow. The range on these things is terrifying, but Dallas doesn't need it. He'll shoot it in your face. Now Sev, Diff, and Reggie, they are low. Moonshot wants a piece of the action. The Hextech Ultimatum is here. Hadio, oh, Hadio survives that and makes it out just under the threshold and Sev Diff has to run away. Sev Ronger died. Was that was that four kills going over to the side of TA Knight throughout that whole fight? In a four versus five. Oh, we're seeing the replay and look at this. It just, it turns around for Dorado just right back in their face. Thing. They can't let him get any closer to this turret. Yeah, Snow Life is definitely the biggest threat on this team at the moment, strictly in terms of map presence and overall utility. Uh, and honestly, I'm I, so I'm not disappointed in Sevdiff in terms of his gameplay right now. Getting caught out here is super unfortunate. Probably going to go down with all the CC that's brought along. Uh, oh my god, Muchai getting... What? Snow that was a Life. 1v2 by Snow Life. Snow Life just says thank you, but the Jarvan comes in to clean it up. Olvarik tries to dive in. Savranger will surely fall here. And now it's a Jarvan that used all of his cooldowns against a level 9 Malphite. The flag and drag comes through. I think Reggie might actually Take a look win to this. the right. Olvarik running away, but Reedy and Dallas, they have arrived. They're here. Reggie is going to have to just clear the wave and move on with it. The root comes through, though. The damage, it's here. Reedy. Pops the Crescent Guard to knock the minions away. The heal comes through, manages to just get out of turret range. The kills are all of a sudden just starting to stack up for TA Knight after what was a really solid early game for Dorado. Yeah, and Moonshot, despite being left alone top lane for, I'd say, the better part of three or three minutes now, uh, Uvarik is still 12 CS up, managing to pick up a kill and an assist while down there. Uh, I mean, like, Moonshot, you, you had all the time in the world to come down and help out, and you tried to farm up top lane, and it just, you know, fell a little farther behind. Um, Dorado Gaming started off so strong and had absolutely everything going in their favor, and now they're the one with bounty options. 
double comes through, but Snow Life oh. is here! Snow Life isn't looking like a support main anymore. This man is on an absolute tear. Muchai is running for his life from Reedy. Meets up with Sevronger. They're between their turrets, but I don't think that matters. Hadio is here, goes over the wall, gets the double root, and a stun as well. The Dawning Shadow. Muchai, I mean, I don't even think that one was needed. This is going to be another outer turret going into the pockets of TA Knight. And now Sevdip and Dallas are duking it out in the mid lane while Reggie just clears some wards because that's all he can do. Yeah, it, it's super unfortunate. Going to get a bit of a replay here. See what happened up in this top lane. I, I mean, what, what do you even say about this? It's, it's exactly what blue team built their comp for. They're crazy CC heavy, extremely mobile, very, very strong dive setup with the Crescent Guard and with Lissandra in there. Uh, they played that absolutely flawlessly. And now we're coming back to live, but the dive is coming through now. It looks like Dorado have found a fight that they want to take the calling as well. Ovark forced to ultimate away. Sevdiff rooted up by Dallas, and now it is the Senna on the run. All five members of Dorado Gaming are after this Senna, and they do finally get the kill. But now Snow Life is here. Hadio is TP'd in on a flank. That's the first kill. We might see some more come through. Reggie dives in with the Cataclysm, but Lissandra enters the stasis with her. Oh, own Sev. Ultimate. Sev is going to fall as well. Hadio's on a rampage, and the range no! ultimate again. Snow Life is just surgical with these. Sev Ronger tries to go in with a bubble. This Ziggs is terrifying. He's a sniper. We're out here thinking that this is a League of Legends game. Snow Life said, nah, check the NBA real quick. Watch this. Like, he, he had some March Madness get through to him a ways back and said, I'm still in it. It's been a month, but I still want some. I mean, nice. Snow Life is going insane. 537, 136 CS at 17 minutes as a support main. I mean... Ah, oh, this is this is everything that we expected to see from this team comp, though, right? Uh, we wanted to see this damage. We wanted to see this control. This wave, the wave state's always in their favor. The one thing that I am disappointed by, and it is not his fault in the in the least, is this Galio. I'm not disappointed in Sev. He's playing Galio the best that he can in in the situation that they're in. Galio is just an underwhelming pick right now because. You're not tanky, and you don't do damage. So look at this. Like, look, just just look at what TA Knight's doing here. They just walked in. Oh no! <laughs> exactly. And the dive comp. I mean, you can't really dive when the rocket right at you. Dallas is off on his own again. But maybe the Senna is just the bait. Galio is there. Gets the taunt. Sev making a pick happen. Maybe, but is gonna get traded. Not quite. The hero's entrance comes through, but Olvaric says hello. The moving mountain going in with the charge. Reggie goes golden as Reedy is on his booty. And there goes Jin Zhao taking down the Jarvan. Ziggs gets another kill because why not? And Moonshot is on the run. That's four kills for one over to that, TA Knight. That's going to be two more turrets. That fight started off and Hadio just hung out bot lane. Got the wave pushing because he knew not just his team, but his character. He knew that he could just kind of hang out down there. The fight would last long enough because there's no real disengage coming from uh, coming from Dorado. So he took his time, got the wave going, then came in with what ended up being a huge flank to clean up an additional kill and guarantee that bot lane tower because wave was already there and the extra team already came through. And there it is, blue team picking up another drag, 12,000 gold lead haven't been able to bring that up or the items just because action has been happening non-stop and it's 22 kills now for TA Knight. I don't think they got any kills in the first six minutes. They've been on an absolute tear. First item completions for everybody on TA Knight. Lucian is still not at his first item yet. As, as I speak, of course, he gets the Gale Force, but that is a 19 minute mythic. That is not what you want to see, Dorado. No. It's, again, it started out well, but it's what you were saying. If TA Knight get ahead in any way, shape, or form, they're just bullying Dorado. Yeah, this is this is the exact worst case scenario for Dorado Gaming in this setup. Um, in the comp that they drafted, but more importantly, in the comp that TA Knight counter drafted, they did a phenomenal job. I'm not going to stop talking about it because I'm extremely proud of them. Just looking at the first two picks, the Lucian Jarvan and saying, oh. All right, yeah, we can we can play against that. Fine, sure, whatever. 
and then they just did it. They have executed this flawlessly. The level nine hit, they grouped up, they got that first huge fight, and then they've just kind of got piecemeal after piecemeal. As the cooldowns come off, they just keep triggering more and more fights, and there's just nothing Jurado Gaming can do. Looking for a pick, huge sidestep on that dive. Everfrost into the taunt comes through, but Reedy, even when there's three members of Dorado after him manages to survive, Fabio tries to what? go in the Dawning Shadow over the top, keeps him alive, and all of a sudden, Dorado, they try what looks to be something good, something helpful, something that can get them back in this game, and TA Knight pulls the Uno reverse card, Snow Life is still here, Moonshot, you're gonna fall as well, and that is a triple kill for the Seta, that is an ace for TA Knight, they're not going for the Baron, they have a cannon, the respawn timers aren't that long, they're only gonna be able to clear a minion wave and maybe get an inhibitor here, but this is just showing the power that TA Knight have in this mid, I mean, essentially now, going into the late game. Yeah, that was absolutely incredible team fight in the overall right there. Again, showing just the, the immense survivability of every single member of TA Knights in this right now. And here's the destructive power that comes with it. Snow Life going solo up to that top lane and taking that tower with the satchels. Just absolutely incredible on all fronts. The uh, Senna Ultimate. Oh, there's Dallas almost going down, actually having Flash after the snare. Sev, don't overextend, has not been having the best luck in that regard. But I want to call out the, the um, oh my goodness, I'm blanking on the name of the move. The Dawn Shadow. Yes, Dawn um, It almost half health, Muchai. Yeah. Like, ju just that move alone. I mean, th this is, as you keep saying, the Fasting Senna. Seven kill. <laughs> Ten assists. Oh, fasting oh, Senna. Oh, oh. Snow Life is unstoppable. Reggie falls in. The Nami almost gets one shot. If that lands right on her, that <laughs> honeypot just kills her. Oh, Jesus. Snow Life is a walking one shot. Um, S Snow Life has 50 CS over next in game, which is dilution. Um, I, I don't even know what to say. He's, he's two levels above his counterpart in terms of bot lane carry. Three levels over the counterpart of bot lane support. Uh, he's two levels above the enemy mid laner. Three levels over the uh, enemy jungler. At this point in time, I mean, Dorado Gaming has to stop trying to fight, which is not what their comp wants to do. All they can try and do is get these levels up, maybe get some farm, but the Baron's coming at them. And quite frankly, Snow Life is leading the charge, absolutely feeling themselves. Yeah, this is this is a Ziggs with a Baron buff. These turrets are, if, if they get a chance to go on, these turrets are gone. But we have a little bit of a flank from Reggie. Dallas, though, gets the first kill. Reggie goes golden, and the hero's entrance from Seth over the top. That is the carry. That's the Ziggs gone, but it looks like it doesn't matter. Dallas says, I'm here, too. Grabs up nine kills of their own. There are still Baron up minions here, and Shelly! makes an appearance are we going to be seeing a dancing rift herald i think we are that is sevronger alone in the base as the nami and olvaric wants to go in there goes the kda and we have a dancing shelly for game number one 32 kills in 23 minutes ta night winning in dominant fashion i do not think that i have seen such an incredible game out of a team in a very very long time they drafted it perfectly they played every single piece that you could think of perfectly uh they finished it perfectly that last fight i have to say dorado did the right thing with that engage it was perfect it was a 4v5 situation ulvrich wasn't there so the malphite ult cc wasn't able to help out but the lucian didn't do enough damage the target priority was correct his uh, ability rotations were perfect uh there was just nothing that he could do at that point in time, which I just fell too far behind from that early game. Uh, and I mean, ultimately, if you take a look at the scores, Severinger had five kills. <laughs> like, nobody else on his team had more than two. Severon had four, got that fifth on the Malphite in, uh, in the spawning pool at the end. But I mean, yeah, that, it's just unfortunate. Indeed. And I mean, like going back, you know, we don't we don't have the stats to pull up, but I'm able to look. We're ta I'm taking a look at them here. And uh, it looks like, you know, that Ziggs had the most damage in the game at 18,000. And if I'm looking at this right, um, 
the only member to reach double digits in the damage was that Lucian for Dorado. And that was only at the 11,000. The Nami had as much damage, if I'm counting this correctly. The, the, they're a little odd. One, two, three, four, five. One. The Nami had as much damage, I believe, as the Camille in that game. Oh, that oh is, it hurts. If, if you are Dorado, you need to go into game two. I think you just need to wipe this game from your brain and say, yeah. all right, game two, just new strat, Dur <laughs> fix something. Dorado needs to put Sev on a carry. Period. That That's it. I, I okay. understand you want to lean on Moonshot because you've been leaning on Moonshot and he was so, so successful early on. It's not going in his favor right now. Put him on a tank. Let him play weak side. Focus on Sev. Sev played incredibly. His position was right. His ults were right. The character was incorrect. Uh, Galio was not the right champion for that setup. I understand. Yes, you want to play a dive comp. Sure. Perfect. You want that extra CC. Okay. Put him on an Orianna. All right. Uh, you know what? I, I like it. I like to hear it. We've seen Sev put up some crazy numbers on the Velkos, on some of his other champions. I'm ready to see it, but we will have game two here. We're getting that all set up. We'll be back in just a few minutes to see if Dorado can keep themselves alive in this series. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Thunder. I am joined by my color caster, Oshi, and this is game number two between Dorado, Gaming, Omega, and TA Knight. We just came off 
of a game one that for about four or five minutes looked really good for Dorado and then looked very, very bad very quickly. They need to win this next game to keep themselves alive in this series. And depending on how some other games go, they do not win this match. They could be knocked out of playoffs. Exactly. This isn't just a, a one game, one off kind of situation that they need to stay alive in. It, they they don't want to leave their fate in somebody else's hands. And quite frankly, they didn't have much of a choice in that last game. If you showed me those first four minutes, cut it and then showed me the ending, I'd think you cropped together two totally different games because, oh my goodness, did TA Knight ever pull through incredibly hard. Um, do you think do you think they'll do it again with Snow Life? Do you think they'll put him on a carry again? I mean, maybe Snow Life. He had that was such a crazy game, and we and we say that, but Snow Life had a crazy game. He had nine kills. Dallas also ended up with nine yeah. kills on the fasting set. The entire team there were thir they had thirty two kills. The entire team was just chock full of gold and chock full of kills. I could see it. I could see them put putting him on. I mean, maybe the zigs again. If Dor like, if Dorado yeah. don't ban the zigs. They must have like their prep just like ingrained into them and refuse to change it because that I think if you're any team, you have to ban it just for the mental. Speaking of, we're into the picks and bans. Ari banned for Dorado, Gangplank gang banned for TA Knight. Same bans yeah. as last time so far. We'll have to see what goes forward. Yeah, nothing super changing. The Senna coming out, they don't want to see that again. Velkaz, we talked about how dangerous Sev is on that, so can't blame them for going back and forth in that regard again. Uh, I, you know, I would, I was really hoping that uh, Moon would give us. Just just something to to take some bands away from Sev to let Sev have just just that inkling more power in his pocket. Um looks like we got the Volibear first pick coming out. So that's not just a takeaway, but that's also a pickup. Um Moonshot doesn't have any volleys on record that I know of. Uvaric though, definitely does. Indeed. But Reggie also in the jungle. Volibear has performed very well in the jungle so far this most recent patch. I don't know if he's received like a lot of dirt buffs in the jungle, but he's just it seems like he's been very good in kind of this mm -hmm. early ganking meta where Jarvan the Fourth has been pretty solid as well. I fully expect to see it there in TA Knight. They're picking up the Lissandra. They can't do the run back with the Senna, but they've decided that, hey, you know what? This was good enough for Hadio. I'm pretty sure he had zero deaths in that yep. game or at least close to it. So picking up that Lissandra again, I think is quite strong. And they pick up the Trundle okay. actually in the jungle. Love it. Uh, Trundle, I think jungle or top lane is a great counter against Volibear, no matter what they decide to do with that. Um, just being able to steal the health away, you know, oh, Volibear is regening health. Cool. So is Trundle, whatever. Um, can run away faster. The pillar to interrupt everything. Just a great overall pick in the current meta. Um, and again, if you take a look at it, TA Knight has drafted two champions that are both incredibly strong on engage and disengage. Both incredibly strong at that. While Dorado, once again, Volibear, one way in, no way out. Indeed, but there we see what I imagine it has to be for Sev in the mid lane, the Cassiopeia. This is a champion. It will have some early game struggles, but this might be something he could potentially carry on if given the opportunity. I want to see him take cleanse. I can't, I can't stress that enough. Flash, cleanse against the comp that TA is already showing. And Zillion coming out, again, something we have seen from, uh, Sa well, excuse me, <laughs> Sa Savranger a few times before um, and really, really supports the Cassiopeia significantly. Obviously, the move speed that she gets from her Q as well as the passive move speed that comes with it, being able to just bump that up to the next level, lets you get in and out, get those pokes before a fight, um, and the bombs on Volibear, well, when he ults in, again, it's it's very very akin to the uh, Oriana ball delivery system. Um, we'll see what TA Knight, I, that's exactly what I expected. Oh, really? A lot, you expected yes. the Lux. Ta yep. Talk us through that. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So it's something like Snow Life has played before. Uh, very similar overall play style to the Ziggs in terms of the the AOE as well as the CC that comes with it. The It's a lot more support based, obviously, but it's a very strong mage pick and very, very much aligns with the Lissandra, the Trundle in terms of engage, disengage. Uh, you have the Q, which does both. You have the E, which does both. You've got the long range ult, just the same. You've got wave control. Uh, it gives you all of this, almost all of the same tools, a little less tower destruction, but overall more team fight utility and a lot more support based utility, uh, which is what we talked about expecting to see out of Snow Life before the previous draft. 
Indeed. Well, I'm certainly excited to see it then. And okay, so far it looks like we have, if you know, if things go according to what at least I'm predicting, we have jungle, mid, and support picks for both teams. TA Knight have decided to target the ADC pool, as well as Dorado. They're taking the Sivir away from Dallas in the bottom lane. And then the Ash and Caitlyn have been banned by TA Knight. And then the Ezreal's been taken away as well. So all in all, that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven yep. bans the ADC position, and TA Knight reaching deep in the pool, grab up the misfortune guess what she brings <laughs> her her e for engage and disengage and her alt for engage and disengage um Ooh. yes do it i absolutely love it you have all of the yeah. escape utility in your own character you don't have to rely on anybody yes hyper carry zaya please love it okay. um i almost wouldn't mind seeing a bard as as drastic as that may seem, a thresh or a bard to give you that crowd control, to give you the in and outs, just anything, anything to throw back the engage disengage that TA Knight is is bringing. Okay, I do have a question for you. If bard okay. is picked, mm -hmm. where does the zillion go, and where does the Cassiopeia go? Volibear jungle Cassio top zillion mid. Ooh, okay. Ooh, we okay. actually we are getting a Wu Kong pick here. And this is going to be in the what? hands of Moonshot. Is it though? Where is it? Where is it? I don't. Wukong okay. could jungle. Wukong, Wukong can jungle. jungle. Wukong yeah. can jungle. What's the Wukong, Wukong can jungle? jungle? What's the Wukong jungle clear light? Is my terrible. I just I'm just trying to. They're not horrible. keeping you on your toes, so I have to. <laughs> <laughs> and instead, oh, hold on. We All do right. have this one. We have a theme. Pick up. We have a theme on this team. <laughs> seems like getting in and getting out but this <laughs> does provide a little bit of flexibility in that jungle and top positions mm -hmm. we have seen both sejuani and trundle in both roles so i'm gonna take a look at the stats here see if i can figure out where this is gonna be going i don't know if i'll be able to though so i would like to see i, I and my my guess is that it's going to be trundle top lane um, significantly safer top lane than the sejuani in my personal opinion sejuani significantly better gank potential than a trundle in my personal opinion, um, for the comfort picks, I've got no idea. I don't think there's any record of either of them going anywhere. I'm I'm checking. So for TA Knight, it actually looks uh, Trundle like Reedy, on Reedy. Yeah, Reedy pretty big on yeah. Trundle, and there is so in the game versus RPG in week six. I don't know if that was Ovaric or Orc in the top lane then, but there is a game of Sejuani top for TA Knight, so that could be okay. where we see it. Uh, but I think I think it is probably going to be. I, I would. I honestly. I like. I like a Trundle top. I like. Yeah. It. Yeah. I. I think. I think Trundle top. Um. Because no matter if it's the Wukong or the Volibear, obviously we're expecting it to be the Volibear top or the Wukong top lane. Sorry. Yes. Um. <laughs> I. I think Trundle's just the better bet in the overall there. Uh, it gives you the sustainability in terms of not just your ult, but also your bite, your passive, all of it. Um. It gives you the mobility to deal with him. I mean, you're not going to be killing the Wukong as Trundle. You're probably not. Anyways, you really shouldn't be, <laughs> especially post level six. But the big thing is it gives him the survivability and it lets him play the weak lane. Um, unfortunately, Dorado is once again looking like they're trying to lean on Moonshot with this Wukong because Wukong can hyper carry big time. Uh, and if Wukong falls behind, at least he has the potential to go into a tankier build, to provide CC, and to just kind of cover for the other two players, uh, the other two carries who should end up doing most of the damage, being the Zion and the Cassio. Yeah, indeed. And, you know, kind of speaking of the, the CC, there is, it's not a lot of, like, point-and-click CC, but looking at Dorado's comp, there is a fair amount. There's, I mean, mm -hmm. Bully Bear has a stun, Cassiopeia, Zillion has a stun if you can land the bombs, and then Wukong with the clones, with the spinning, you know, with the, with the spin to win. There's a fair amount of CC there. So I could, you know, I, I, it seems like, and especially with the with the Zaya and then the Zillion, you know, revive a teammate, it seems like now this time they have, it's not all about the dive. It seems like they can actually disengage and the onus is not going to be on them that to just have to fight, 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 which is a problem, as you said in the last game, where at yeah. some point they had to stop fighting, but their comp wouldn't allow it. Yeah, exactly. So I think uh, I think Dorado definitely has a lot more potential to put up a much stronger fight against TA Knight this time around. Um, the I would say the biggest advantage here is Dorado has completely changed their entire comp, right? Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, TA Knight at the very least still has Hedo on that Lissandra who was deathless 
last game and absolutely wrecked or wreaked havoc uh, uh, every single time that they showed up anywhere. Uh, I mentioned the the one fight that happened on the red by the red side blue buff where he pushed up the bot lane beforehand and then came in with a massive flank to pick up two extra kills, which also gave him the second tower on that push. Uh, gameplay like that, the mobility that comes with this character and Hario's overall map awareness, uh, I would say actually makes Lissandra a very devastating pick um, which, when you look at the rest of his pool, I mean, Ari kind of gives you the same thing with the ult, Echo gives you the same thing with the wall roll, so it really seems to fit into the overall play style that he brings. Indeed. Well, I'm excited to see that. Now, one thing to note, for where the champions ended up for TA Knight, it is Ovaric on the Sejuani top, it is Reedy on the Trundle in the jungle. Everything else is pretty much as we anticipated for both teams. Now, I was going to make a point, but I completely forgot about it. But the main thing that I want to say is it seems like TA Knight, they're a great, like, I, I'm so interested to see what the mental is going to be from them. Because sometimes you can go into those game ones and just absolutely stomp. And then you get too overconfident. And then you start trying to play with your ego. And that might be somewhere that Dorado can take advantage of. And I will say that is part of why I love TA Knight's draft. Because... Most of them did also change up the champions. But if you look at the champions that they're playing, what, two of them have dive abilities? Lissandra and Sejuani. That's mm -hmm. it. So it's very, very hard to kind of force yourself into that throw wagon, so to speak, right? Where, like you said, you just kind of, you, you remember last game where you could one-shot the guy and you kind of start feeling that same way. Uh, it's really not something that they can do. I would say the only other real situation there is Snow Life on Lux. Can't get away with his own satchel anymore. But I don't think we ever saw him have to do that. So, yeah. other than in the early game. And so we'll have to see if Dorado can replicate that early game success and this time carry it through, or if TA Knight are just going to lock this one up and call it a week and call it a CCS first split. But we have just a couple of minutes before we get into that all important game, too. We will see you there in just a moment.
Hello everybody and welcome back to the CCS2, the matchup between Dorado Gaming Omega and TA Knight. This is not quite a do or die matchup for Dorado, more specifically a do or die game, but depending on how the Yao yeah, okay Infinite series is going, which somebody update Twitch chat, they're begging to know, uh, that could <laughs> mean doom and gloom for Dorado. So first off, level ones, it looks like TA are just doing your five point fan out but Dorado have five stacked a bush on their own red side jungle. Yeah, this uh, this isn't really where I would expect to see a five-man stack. But you have to remember, at the start of the last game, uh, TA Knight did push in and get that red ward. So I guess they were expecting the same thing this time. That is a sweeper gone found. Finding nothing for Reggie. I mean, nothing lost by using that. It just means that you definitely know that they don't know, but now you also don't know. So everybody starts blind. Indeed, but it does look like both junglers will be starting on the bottom side of the map. There, yeah, there are no no, no jungle tracking right now. And so I guess, you know, both teams are just going to kind of be guesstimating. We'll see where wards get placed. There's going to be a late invade, but minions have already spawned. Both junglers are actually going to get a leash on this bottom side, so we'll see which bottom lane gets to the lane first. Could be important, but we'll have to see. This is just absolute opposite start of what we saw from the last game, right? Last game was no leashes, they knew where everybody was, everybody knew what was going on. But you know what, this time, it, you, it's not anywhere near as dangerous for the lanes with these junglers, right? Uh, neither Trundle nor Volibear really want to do a level 2, even a level 3 gank is kind of questionable for them when you compare it to the Zinzao and the Jarvan especially. Uh, Moonshot trading out quite well with Avarix so far. Indeed. So we're putting, out, putting out a good chunk of damage. I'm interested to see how this goes throughout the game. Ovara taking a huge chunk of damage. The Ignite is getting thrown Whoa. down on both sides. And Solo Bolo in the top lane. Moonshot getting first blood. And Sev even, put, even pushing pretty aggressively in the mid lane here. Yeah, not even just over two minutes in. And that first blood coming out. Great play by Moonshot. What everybody, and I mean everybody wants to see out of this yes even ta knight wants to see it because i'm sure you know that with their position already locked in i'm sure they'd love to see this team also make playoffs right right yeah, at the very least you want good practice and hey you know if they can smash dorado really hard in game one and then dorado make playoffs and have to face ta knight that's just like you know that that's that's a mental that they've still got to overcome but mm -hmm. that being said everybody's back in the lanes reedy and reggie just say hello to each other in the jungle ovark is the one that gets the first move the pillar comes through slows reggie down but moonshot is here did get the back but did not get any buys at least i don't think and now does a 2v2 up here in the top side river reedy is forced to fly but Ovark is still here. Moonshot used the clones. Reggie, the cooldowns are pretty much gone from everybody at this point. Ovark is still quite helpful. Ovark should turn this. Through, but Ovark, he is low, and Moonshot gets another kill onto the Sejuani. Reedy and Hadio are both up here. We'll see if they can make it happen, but Cassio is on the way. Sev going to make something happen. Hadio, can he get the kill? Moonshot survived for so oh long, goodness. and it ends up with Reedy dying again. But that's enough time for Ovark to respawn. Comes back. They're going to be able to clear the wave, but that is two more kills going over to the side of Dorado Gaming Omega. Another strong early game. This one much stronger than the last one, I dare say. Uh, you know what? The money is where they want it. That's the big thing here, right? We keep talking about the fact that they lean on Moonshot. Now it's all the gold is going to him. Two kills coming in for him right there and one on to Sev in the mid lane. That's ideal compared to, no offense to the guy, Severunger in the bot lane. You don't really want all the kills on the support, which is what we saw last game. I will say and i really want to point out in that fight that happened there was one misplay and one huge outplay varic could have stood and autoed moonshot and probably picked up that kill significantly sooner for his team he was too focused on trying to survive didn't fight back enough my opinion not 100 percent the other thing that i saw though moonshot hit hadio with the s key fake out of the clone hadn't used his w yet stopped moving Hadio turned and walked around a different direction. Classic. That. Moonshot really flexing these Wukong mechanics is about to get another solo kill onto Olvaric. Oh no! Moonshot takes a turret shot, but it doesn't matter. 
That is a third death for Olvaric in the top lane, and a third kill on to Moonshot. Already has the Sheen, is going to be able to collect a nice juicy amount of CS here before backing and buying what is going to be very, very close to a big item spike. And look at this lane freeze. Like, that was absolutely perfect. He managed to pick up the kill without pushing the minions so he gets to freeze the freeze the minions near his tower while he's that far ahead here oh had that had had the ward in the in the bush thankfully so really gonna have to go for a little walk indeed maybe but he's he's still hanging out up there we'll see what this volibear bear wants to do now while there has been a lot of action happening up on the top side of the map dallas has pretty quietly gained a 15 cs lead on his counterpart moochai as i talk about it olvaric has to dash away gets out of there reggie takes a turret shot but it only hits his shield and olvaric survives this time for now no flash on this sejuani proving to be uh pretty punishing but you know again dallas Getting this farm lead up and going, this could be where TA Knight want to focus. And, you know, last game we saw him get behind in the early game, although they were actually keeping even in gold. And this time they already are down 1,000. Oh, that's pretty much all on Moonshot up there on the top lane. Yeah, I will say that uh, TA Knight is playing this incredibly well. Obviously, their top lane is the weak side of the map right now, down two levels and a ton of gold, like we keep mentioning. But their mid lane is up, was or was up, sorry. Uh, more, most importantly, Hadio was a level up, and this bot lane is relatively even. So what did they do? They rotate, they take the dragon. It puts more pressure on the bot lane, and it gives them a late game win condition if the game continues in the way that it is in terms of Dorado just kind of really dominating early on in that top half. Ooh, so Rondo, the bombs don't quite land onto Snow Life, but it does zone him into a very awkward position, forcing him to flash. And now here comes the big bear himself. The exhaust put down onto oh. the Lux. Dallas is running as best as he can, but that is a zillion bomb that's on him. But Reedy has arrived. Level five, level five in the jungle. Volibear gets a big chunk of health, but it doesn't matter. Miss Fortune, Dallas slays the big bear picks up more farm this is gonna be about a 30 cs lead in the bot lane to match the 30 cs lead in the lead in the top lane yeah it's uh we're we're looking at the uh what, what is it a tale of two cities is what the book's called but either way you can see right here you've got the top lane on the one side the bot lane on the other side uh and you know what it really comes down to is how do the jungles favor and who do the jungles favor right obviously moonshot should be able to bully ovaric mostly out of lane but the, uh, you know, the, the grasp of uh, Ovaric making it difficult. Muchai, not level six yet. Don't think he's going to get too much out of that. And here's Moonshot. Ovaric, even more damage. The spin to win coming through. The stun just out of range of the turret. And Moonshot is playing this matchup on the edge of a knife. And it is paying off. Four kills on the Wukong in the top lane. Honestly, by the way, I thought Dallas was going to die down here on the bottom side of the map. I am amazed that they managed to make it out alive. And they are now going to be walking back to lane after recalling and getting the first big item of the oh game my. in the Monomune. Yeah, very, very big first pickup. I'm definitely just going to leave that bot lane to push very heavily now. Uh, they're really looking to harass with ability spam, I'm assuming is the, the major reason behind making that the very first purchase. Oh, so Gronger zooming in here, the Zillion bombs not quite doing enough. Hadio with some very good Lissandra mechanics to navigate that mm -hmm. situation in an unsuccessful gank, not even getting the flash. Yeah, we saw really early on in game one, Reggie was able to pop four flashes in four minutes, and this time around uh, has not really had too much of a presence. A successful gank top lane, I'll give him that, but a lot of that comes down to Moonshot playing this lane so strongly. Really, like, uh, I don't see TA Knight... Oh! Snow Life feeling spicy still, given his last game's performance, very understandable. We'll have to see. That freeze going on on the bottom side of the map, a freeze going the other way on the top side. Reedy is here. Ovaric pushes in the wave, leaving Moonshot to clear it out. Adio in a great position right here. Going to catch that bot lane big time. Hunger. That is going to be a dead zillion carrying his own bomb. Didn't have the ultimate to bring himself back to life. Hadio has slain Savranger and gotten a kill on this Lissandra. Reggie is up here. This is going to be another 2v2 topside in the Rift Herald pit. 
Reggie, Moonshot, they're both here. The ultimate comes through. I don't know who quite grabbed that. I'm waiting to see the update. It looks like it was TA Knight. Reedy, though, he may have gotten the Herald, but it cost him his life. It's, it's one of those things where you just kind of got to look at it and say, all right, but, right? Yeah, I mean, you have to make that Herald worth more than 300 gold now. If you can manage that, it was worth it. Snow Life in the mid lane now. No life. Is this going to be a successful gank? Looks like it will. Reggie not able to get there in time. And now Dallas in a 1v1 against Moochai before Saronger gets here. Almost is able to get another solo turret plate. Despite this top lane, it looks like the advantage across you know the rest of the map is going pretty heavily in the favor of TA Knight. The only reason that Muchai is keeping up in levels to Dallas right now is because of the Zillion passive. That's it. Otherwise, he's struggling down here. 40, almost 50 CS behind at this point. Uh, they, they need to stop trading. If you have to sit under tower, do it. It's okay. Take it. Um, Lux has no mana items as it stands, so there's only so much harassment that she can output. Uh, you have to wait for your jungler. Reggie needs to not, no, doesn't necessarily have to gank the bot lane. I don't think that's going to go too well for him if he tries, but he needs to show presence down here so that Dallas can't play the way he's playing. He's way too aggressive right now. Yeah, and I mean, we saw Reggie going and clearing the ward, and the instant that Reggie went to clear that ward, we saw Reedy and Hadio begin to make their way down to the bottom side of the map. Now, the second dragon of the game has spawned. TA Knight grabbed the first one. Snow Life gets a root, doesn't have the ultimate to follow up until just now. And these big team fight ultimates that Dallas and Snow Life have are coming online. We're seeing a TP come through for uh. Ovarik, but this dragon is going down quickly. That's a double root. The Zaya and, Z and Zillion ultimates are burned to survive, um. but the Trundle really manages to get in the pit and steal the drake away moonshot is spinning to win trying to make this carry happen but he dies on the back side of the fight there are still four members alive for the side of dorado oh huge jillion bombs they get the stuns coming through but hadio manages to go golden goes into the stasis reggie has to burn the ultimate as well ultimates burned every which way up and down moochai and Savronga, the bottom lane they're trying to make something happen Ovar gets slow to bomb lands on him don't walk to dallas that'll kill him and there they go that is three four kills going over well three kills and two huge ultimates burned in that team fight as well as the dragon i have to say and we're going to see it on the replay right here the dragon's already dead at the start of this replay but what really happened there was quite simply reggie just smiting too soon and then blue team not cutting their losses they could not fight that they didn't have the setup they didn't have the vision and quite frankly half their team was half health when they started the dragon they needed to say okay look we don't have the positioning here and just get out indeed and you know two of them got out and it was the two members that had the get out of jail free cards ultimate but sev oh goodness Ooh. he's just getting deleted here but a huge ultimate from him he managed not quite to get the trade no. back greedy with an ultimate not even the ultimate of his own just barely surviving that greedy leveled up Oh, with the level <laughs> up, and then here we see the Herald. This is going to be the mid lane turret drop. Re, that is probably the most timely level up I have seen in a very long time. An absolute luck fest, so to speak. The the Lux W came out for the shield. The ultimate gave one last tick of healing and the level up, and he had I don't know 50 HP, maybe 20 HP as he walks away from that absolutely calculated is what we're going to go with here. Moonshot looking to get another fight in on Ulvrich. Yeah, I think this is going to be another solo kill on the Sejuani, but we saw what happened last time. Moonshot was able to get a kill in the team fight. Ulvrich still alive, but not for long. Moonshot takes a turret shot, and it doesn't even matter. But there is currently a 5k, 4.5k gold lead for the side of TA Knight. While Moonshot is pressing this lane advantage more and more, it doesn't really matter. Olvaric is there to throw his ultimate, and that's about it. Hadio dodging away from the Cassiopeia cooldowns to throwing in a little bit more damage. And looks like they're going to be getting this bottom tier 1 turret as well. Yeah, it's going to take them a little longer than it would have, you know, if they had a, a Ziggs, for example, on Snow Life. But they're definitely going to start or continue whittling away at it. One, maybe two more waves before they get it. Snow Life just being an absolute pain in his own lane, I will say. Looks like Reedy wants a piece of Moonshot. He is here. He has his ultimate. That's a huge chunk out of the Wukong with those resistances sliced. Reedy, even a level down, they are chasing quickly. Moonshot dashes away. And Dallas is just going to pick this up with the ultimate. 
Dallas goes on a rampage, gets a kill onto the carry of Dorado Gaming, and TA Knight are now pressing their own advantage hard. And that is one of the major situations when you are playing a mana-hungry push like Wukong. He used all of his abilities, used all of his mana, expecting to just be able to walk back to his tower and recall, and it was perfectly timed by Reedy. He said, oh, you, you can't use anything to fight me or get away. So he just walked at him menacingly. Yeah, and it and it worked. You know, that's kind of that's kind of what you're talking about with this trundle. It counters the Volibear really well. Also counters the the Wukong pretty well in as well. You know, even a level down with Wukong without the ultimate, that's just a, you know, if he can't run away fast enough, that is just a feast for the troll king. And now Sevranger and Muchai, we've got a little bit of some lane of swapping going on. We will see where the final lane assignments end up. A little bit of a weird state, but Dallas, Snow Life, Ulvaric, they are in that three person stack towards the mid lane as the dragon spawns here in just under a minute. TA Knight will be fighting for soul point. Dorado want to try to prevent that from happening at all costs. I will say I'm a little interested in watching Savrangu here. Um, support main myself, he has not moved over to the sweeper yet. Uh, and vision is a huge problem. Oh, Moonshot, he just barely managed to dodge out of the Everfrost with the clone. Ovar keeps going with the chase, but that is four members of TA Knight here. Even a Wukong, as fed as he is, can't quite handle that much. Uh, you know what? Uh, we saw Savrangu recalling on a red ward in that top tri brush on their own side. And really, that just kind of rings the dinner bell for TA Knight in that bot red area. They say, oh, at the very least, the revive's not around. So uh, yeah, let's just go bush camp. And it almost worked out for them. They got the ult out of the Wukong, which is incredibly important. Uh, and this is a very risky Herald. Indeed it is. TA Knight are here. They're looking for the fight. Olvar goes in with a little bit of a charge on the Moonshot. That Wukong ultimate is still not back up. Reedy going in with the Trundle, but that's just the clone. But Dallas gets the kill onto the Wukong with a little bit of assistance from Olvaric, and that's exactly what you want out of the Sejuani. Doesn't matter if she goes 0-5 in the lane, as long as she can chuck that ultimate, that is a game you want to play. And again, it's just a matter of vision. And so they just threw everything that they had at them. They, they just literally just pushed all the buttons and we're watching it once again. Uh, he, and the, the crazy thing is even at the end of that fight, how do you eat in straight at the bot lane? <laughs> you know, like he just went in solo towards the bot lane of Dorado, uh, which tells you everything that you need to know about how he's feeling. Yeah, how do you explain this Lissandra like one of the hyper mobile assassins? It's like, it's so, it's so fun to see it happen yeah. and is performing so well. Currently keeping even with Cassiopeia on the CS, but has the three kills and the three assists. Currently has the Everfrost. We have mythic items completed for three members of TA Knight and three members of Dorado Gaming. But the Misfortune has the completed Eclipse and uh, Moochai on the Xyle only has the Noon Quiver so far. Once again, falling behind hard in this ADC matchup. Yeah, it's it, it, it's exactly what we saw in the last game as well. Uh, Moochai just keeps finding himself in kind of a bad situation. Um, super unfortunate. Another huge fight up top. Snow Life just living. He managed to survive. The ultimate comes through, but Savronger with the ultimate of his own onto Reggie brings the bear back, and the ultimate is not timed out yet. It doesn't matter. Snow Life gets a kill, is trying to run away, but Moonshot is here. The spin to win comes through and locks down two of them. Reedy might fall as well, but Miss Fortune. Dallas comes over with the bullet time. Savronger is on the run. Zaya going into her own blue side jungle and Cassiopeia is not anywhere near. This is the downside of not having the TP on this flash cleanse Cassiopeia. That is exactly what I was going to say. It's once again, they saw Sev bot lane and it was an incredible fight for Dorado Gaming. Don't get me wrong. That was the right place, the right plays. Uh, but, you know, when, when you push into the enemy jungle, when you're 8,000 gold down, you're gonna ha you have to expect some backlash, especially when your mid laner's not there. Um, and I will say, I said it in the draft, I wanted to see the cleanse on Sev. I love that they took it. It is the correct pick. However, his team is not playing properly around that pick, and TA Knight is very, very much taking advantage of that. Every single time Sev goes to try and farm up somewhere, they force a fight. They push in, they get vision, they're doing everything correct. And a 
Olvark. Olvark can just dash away and he's out of there. Snow Life has landed so many roots. I think I've only seen him miss one. An absolute chad on this Lux. And we're going to have the Drake, you know, the final Drake, what I assume to be spawning in soon. I, if you're Dorado, I guess the good news is that last time around this point in the game, uh, TA Knight had like 22 kills and currently they only have 13 and you have 10. So you're feeling pretty decent, but Sevranger and Muchai, they're about to get caught out. Moonshot as well, but he goes back in. It's a 1v1. He doesn't mind those. The audio gets over the wall. Moonshot getting a little bit of harassment from the Trundle and Dorado, they just can't take a fight anywhere. No, it's just an unfortunate situation all across the map right now. I I don't really see too many situations uh, where Dorado wins a 1v1 outside of the Wukong straight up to the Sejuani. Uh, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure every other player can fight him without too much concern. It looks like we're getting an early Baron, a 20 minute Baron call here. Uh, okay. I mean, <laughs> you know, you're still two minutes off drag, so sure really just looking to force that fight yet again. Um, and it looks like Dorado wants nothing to do with it. Maybe, but there's no setup. Reggie, it looks like he's thinking about going behind the Baron Pit, but oh Moonshot. Ooh, that was only the clone going down to half health, thankfully. But Olvark is here. This is a tanky Sejuani. The bullet time hits nobody. Sevronger manages to get one bomb down on the misfortune. Reggie takes a lot of damage from the Lux ultimate. Olvark and Reedy are low, but Moonshot, Reggie, Sev, Moonshot, they are in a lot of trouble. Sev managed to just barely get out of there. Oh, the Zillion has to recall. The ultimate has already been used. The cooldown is exhausted. Hadio, mm -hmm. speaking of, gets exhausted and kills right through it. Moonshot going in with the ultimate and gets taken down. Sev, Diff, Cassiopeia gets one kill back. I mean, that's the best that you can hope for. That's not good enough for Dorado. They are. Levels. This matchup already wasn't good. Even expends yeah. the stasis. That ah, might have been a waste, buddy. I think he's just trying to buy a bit of time for his team. I mean, they know the dragon's about to come up, but they don't want to let them get both the dragon and the baron off of that fight. Uh, that's all I can think of as to why he would stall out with the stopwatch there on top of everything else. He ran away from his base, right? He he did everything he could to take the trundle away from the rest of his team. Um, ultimately, it, it doesn't pay off for them. It, the, the ultimates were used very early on in the fight for Dorado Gaming or weren't even off cooldown yet in the case of Wukong's ult. And it looks like we're going to have another trap. Oh, a massive... It's cool. A massive what? Lux Root comes through, but Sevrogger manages to cleanse and flash out of it using that cleanse of his own. Stays alive. Maybe that will be enough to turn this team fight around. But actually, it looks like they don't even want to go for this Drake. This is going to be soul point over to TA Knight, and it is the infernal soul. Yeah, that uh, that's the long and the short of that one right there. You know, the dragon was coming up, the dragon went down, um, and off they go to Baron, which is exactly what we expected to see. Indeed, yep. They're pushing it to the Baron. This is going to be Baron. It is going to be soul. I, there has not even been a tower taken for the side of Dorado Gaming. They are currently just hovering around their base, waiting to clear these super minions. They're not even pretending to try and care about this Baron. Uh, this is going over to TA Knight. The siege is going to begin, and with this misfortune, with this Sandra, with the Lux, this is going to be a tough siege to stop. I want to take a second and point out the ward scores, the vision scores on, on both teams right here, because I think it's something that we need to talk about a lot more frequently in League of Legends uh, at all levels. If you take a look at the winning team, look at the support numbers, they're pretty close. Look at the ADC numbers, the 25 to 17, mid lane 19 to 15. Uh, it, it, you see the winning lanes have these higher vision score numbers and that's, that's cause effect. You can pick which one comes first, but it's super important when you're behind if you don't have vision. Look at the map right now. Look at how little vision blue team has anywhere because they can't go anywhere. And Moonshot even invests the ultimate, invests the clone to try to go in, doesn't get any kills. A huge root from Snow Life just gifts 
four kills over the misfortune for a quadra and there is a penta for dallas that is absolutely going to close out the game this is baron buff this is infernal soul this is ta knight saying hey we are above the riffraff we they take this game in a very very dominant 2-0 series we saw both games start and end the same way with a very strong start by Dorado and down to is Reedy. Reedy did an incredible job of making sure that Dallas was comfortable, that Snow Life was okay, and that Hadio had free reign of any and everywhere that he wanted to be. The gold numbers say everything that you need to see. Dallas, 13,000 gold. Muchai, 6.9. Double the gold. That is crazy. That's crazy. This is like, that was, you know, I'm going to, I'll be transparent here. I was expecting TA Knight to win. Was I expecting it to be this <laughs> dominant? Absolutely not. Yeah, I, I, I don't really know what else that I can tell you uh, aside from TA Knight playing both their comps perfectly, both games. Um, they, they drafted incredibly well. They played their champions incredibly well. They controlled the map. They controlled the lanes. They controlled the wave states. Uh, the, the only thing that went poorly was Ovirek in top lane. And quite frankly, he played it perfectly in the end anyways. He was playing weak side. He was dying just on the cusp of being under tower almost every single time that the Wukong killed him in lane. Okay. But it didn't matter because he kept coming back. He kept pushing the wave back and Moonshot couldn't do anything with the lead that he built himself. Look at, at the scoreline in, in the end for Moonshot was seven and seven. He was plus minus zero. Uh, Uvarik, sure. Oh, five minus five. Go all the way across to KD, they, KDA though. You're plus two on Moonshot. You're plus six on Uvarik. And most gracious. And Dallas with that 12 kills. Five of those coming on that last Penta. A phenomenal game coming out of Dallas, really. Carrying that bottom side of the map despite what was going on in the top lane. And we, were we will have an interview with Dallas here in just a few minutes. We'll go on a brief break. Be right back for that interview from TA Knights ADC. Don't go anywhere.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back. We are here with an interview with the ADC for TA Night Dallas. Dallas, congratulations on the 2-0 victory this week over Dorado Gaming Omega. These games felt like stomps. How what how did you how did your team feel? What were the comms like after those first two games? Messiah looking weak this patch, that's for sure. <laughs> That's uh, how was what my uh, my jungler told me that, and uh, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> I'm I'm very happy with uh, the games. Uh, I'm very happy with how the team played, and oh, especially Overic, he is able to hold mental strong, keep it together. So I'm very happy. That's really something that I wanted to to ask you about. So I'm glad that you answered it right off the bat. Was uh, you know when you when you're dying in the one v one top lane, it's it's difficult, right? It's frustrating. Um, so I wanted to, I wanted to hear like what was going on with your team through all of that. Most importantly, what was Reedy saying or being told to do in those situations? Because he spent a lot of, a lot of time down with you guys, not necessarily in your lane, but just kind of making sure that you were comfortable letting you play your own game. Um, so like what's, what's the communication like between your jungle and your top in those situations? Uh, I mean, a lot of the communication was me flaming the enemy ADC for, <laughs> uh, being 40 CS down at eight minutes. Uh, and I, I mean, just me saying that just kind of assures him that he doesn't have to do much. Like going into game, Snow said, "Don't let Wukong get too far ahead," and we kind of win the game because there's no one on the enemy team that can really deal with our backline except Wukong. Like yeah. you saw in a lot of the team fights, like right before uh, the the Penta, uh, Wukong W'd forward onto the onto Snow and tried yeah. to one shot him, and he just mm -hmm. flashed away, and all of Wukong's cooldowns are gone. Because they just love snow life, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> well, after game one, can you blame them for trying to take him out? Nope, not really. Yeah. So I thought that is another question. You were you, you were kind of put on a little bit more of the supportive role in that game one. To be fair, you ended with like nine kills or something. But was that kind of like giving Snow Life a chance to 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 be the real hard carry for once, to be the one getting all the kills on the team? Your your team does pretty often get a lot of kills so how, how was that what was the communication there what was the plan Nah, i love senna senna's one of my favorite 80s in the game since like since release i i've absolutely loved her design uh and i love the like i love playing her so any chance that i get to play her and uh playing her with snow makes it very easy because we flex her around a lot um so we just b one it and then held it till the very end and then just pick the, the we pick an ideal matchup with it um but i wouldn't say it was more of a supportive role because i know i'm on a champ i'm comfortable enough to just carry like him regardless so and nice he, but you know one thing that we were talking about for at least your game one draft was it seemed like we saw the first two picks for dorado which was the j4 and the lucian and then we were talking on the stream on the cast that it seemed like you all immediately went, oh, okay, well, let's just counter the dive as hard as possible. And then you just had a bit of a draft gap. Was going in, like, was this a draft that you adapted to what Dorado picked, or was this something that you already had planned going in, other than just the Senna and the Ziggs? Nah, Hadji was just a giga chat and goes, pick me Lissandra at, any, at some random point in the draft. It was after their B1, he, he goes, pick me Lissandra game two, and he did the same thing after their comp, so... Um, we, we we trust him on the pick. We know we've seen him play it countless times, so we we just absolutely trust it. Um, there's no point like debating him on those picks, but uh, I mean, I think they just force themselves into um, into a play style pretty quickly because the second they pick Lucian, we knew they were playing Nami um, on three. Otherwise, we'd ban it. So we already knew our bot matchup on their first pick, and we knew they wouldn't pick a uh, support on two. So they just kind of showed us how how they wanted to play the game pretty immediately. Yeah, that's uh, that's exactly what we what we saw as soon as Illusion got picked. Even Thunder here called the the Nami support right at the gate. Um, and he, again, yeah, as soon as you guys picked Senna, even we saw it and we went, okay, well that could be support or ADC, and they're just gonna wait and see how it goes. Um, I have to say, I was I, I admire the the comps that you drafted both games, the way that it was drafted both times. Uh, hearing that the Lissandra pick was just. Uh, you know, as you as you said, just kind of a Giga Chad play. He just kind of said, "Yeah, I'm just going to do that." Uh, when ultimately, it it was the perfect counter pick to the entire composition that Dorado ended up drafting both games. Uh, is just hilarious. That, that's either some kind of foresight 
or he he's really not letting you guys in on how good he actually is at drafting. Oh no, we 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 know how good Hadio is at, at those champs. Me and Snow play on another team with him, and he does the okay. same thing. And yeah. we trust him wholeheartedly. We love playing with the guy. We know how confident we can be in him on his uh his set champ pool. Oh, amazing. Well, that, we certainly love to hear that, especially going into playoffs. Of course, y'all have already had it locked for a while, but today, and I'm you know keeping updated with current games and whatnot. You haven't, I you know, I I believe Yao K lost O two, so you didn't yeah. knock Dorado out of playoff contention. I believe they are still good to go, or at least they'll be pretty close to it. But you know, with this win, how are you feeling going into playoffs? You still have to face up, you know, you will, if you want to win, you're going to have to face up against DNX and Hard Hat Zone again. So how are you and the team feeling after having already played those teams earlier in the season? Uh, I can't personally speak on that as I am a newer roster addition. I didn't get to play against DNX and Hard Hat. Um, I was a sub for TA Light for the earlier part of the season, and I only played against Blue Esports before coming over tonight. Um, I'm I'm excited to play them though. I think uh, I think DNX is has a very very strong top side. I think their bot side is definitely their weakness. But I will I, saying bot side feels wrong because I don't think Exernian is bad. I think it's just specifically Mori that is their weakness. Um, and I'm a very aggressive AD, so I kind of like that. So I think personally we have a very good matchup into DNX and um, hot take. But I think Hard Hat is very overrated. Uh, mm. I think I think that. Every team in the top four, being both TA teams, DNX, uh, can all beat uh, Hard Hat for sure. I think Light is the the least likely to be able to beat them, but I think they actually can take games off of them consistently. Um, and I think DNX and Knight can just roll Hard Hat. So I'm not scared of those two. Not just beat them, but roll them, he says. I mean, absolutely. From, from the second you walked in here, the first question that we asked you said, well, I was just flaming the enemy bot lane. <laughs> like, nothing out of your mouth so far in this entire interview has been anything but aggressive, which, as you said, suits your play style. So I, I, it's kind of a personality trait at this point, wouldn't you say? I like having fun. I don't, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. When, when, being up 50 C, when I was at 73, I, I jokingly asked Snow Life, and I said, hey, is Riot bugging or is Zaya CS just flipped because she was at 37? So I just thought oh, Riot might have been playing a trick on me and flipped her CS numbers for fun, like you know. Yeah, but, but I guess I guess it was wrong when it updated to thirty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, indeed. Well, you had a dominant game in both game one and game two, both in your lane and your team as a whole. So, just one last time, congratulations! Is there one last thing you want to tell out to the fans out there before you head off for the f after the last week of the regular season of the CCS? Nah, just want to shout out my team. Well, Vera, Kadia, Reedy, and Snow. They're all the best. I love them. That's it. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for the interview, Dallas. And thank you, everybody, for coming out and watching us on the CCS2 to watch TA Night 2-0 Dorado. We will be going into playoffs next, so keep an eye out for the schedule there as well mm -hmm. as the standings and the seedings. But until then, be safe, be smart, make wise decisions, and farewell.